And quite frankly, this feels like a very serious energy of coming down to earth and being like, all right, bitch, we gotta do something about this. Let's go, let's go, let's, we're gonna, we gonna, we about to pull up over here mm -hmm. because it's for your own good. Mm -hmm. So let's do it, honey. Come on, let's get this work. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general energy reading for your day or for whenever. Yes, your daily general energy energy reading. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading, so whenever you are guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you in that moment. As always, I do have a playlist for Morning Coffee, which you can find right up here on the top right of your screen if you are watching on a mobile device or uh, like a PC or something like that. If you're on, I like say a Roku or something like that or like Apple TV, I don't know if it's gonna work. But either way, you can find that uh, playlist if you go into my playlists section on my channel here. Um, and I have a plethora of a bunch of other readings there. So um, if you wanna dive down the rabbit hole, just make sure that you pay attention to the title of the reading and not the date, because it's the title that's going to tell you whether or not the reading will resonate for you. Yes, potentially, of course. And not everything is general, so keep that in mind. Happy Thursday. Yeah, we are almost done with the week, you guys. The weekend is almost here, y'all, but Tonight, we are doing happy hour, yeah? So the floor is officially open. If you would like to get in on happy hour, uh, find, you'll find all the information in the description box below. The link to send your payment is paypal.me slash divine conversations. Yes, uh, $25 for a single question reading. Please make sure to put your question in the notes section of your reading. And all my Patreoners out there, make sure you look out for your extra 15% off discount code posted on Patreon sometime this afternoon. Yes? All right, y'all. Um, I'm feeling good. Things are much better. Uh, I will say that I have gotten back into doing my, um, my uh, chakra work. Yes? And let's talk about that for a second. So what is chakra work? Well, for me, chakra work is focusing on my chakras and intentionally bringing energy into them. Um, Dr. Joe Dispenza talks about in his book, uh, Becoming Supernatural. In that, in that book, he talks about the fact uh, that, and actually, I mean, he's, I, I'm pretty sure he's not the only one that has said this, but he's the person that I remember saying it and who I grasped the, the real concept from. But the concept is where your attention goes, energy flows. So for me, I spend a good amount of time um, out in nature, you know, in my backyard here, meditating, connecting with nature, connecting with the earth, and then focusing on bringing energy up my chakra system, starting from my root chakra and taking it all the way up until I can feel it hitting my third eye and then my crown. And then I also focus on bringing cosmic energy down from the universe, down through my chakra system, but also what I, I like to do is imagine the energy coming from the cosmos down around my chakra system, like around the sushumna, which is the, the, the cord that connects the all of your chakras. Yeah, I bring it down as in like a big channel down my body and I like to bring it down to my root chakra and then from my root chakra pulling it up the system. Yeah, you can do that in which like you're pulling energy from the earth through your root chakra and up and then cosmic energy from your crown down. But what I've been focusing on lately is just bringing it down my body and then bringing that cosmic energy up my root chakra. I've been spending a lot of time working on my foundation, working on my sense of self, working on my identity, and really working, especially over the last few days, ever since we had that session talking about resentment and all that, really working on allowing the concept of forgiveness and letting go and healing really get to my root chakra so that it can help change who I am fundamentally, right? Because your root chakra is your base, it is your sense of identity, it is your connection into this physical reality and the earth, right? So if anything is going to change within you, it has to change in your root chakra first. So I feel like right now the recommendation really should be to bring root, to bring energy from the earth up through starting 
to at your root chakra and then hitting everyone all the way till you get to the top, your crown, and then bringing cosmic energy through your crown and hitting that all the way down until it hits your root chakra, yeah? But you guys do it however you feel best. But that's what I've been doing lately, and to be quite honest, it's really, really helping. Like, you guys, I... I it, it, Sometimes a lot of this work, this personal work, this soul work, this expansion work, this ascension work, it can seem really daunting, especially when you're dealing with a lot of trauma and triggers. But I've noticed, at least in this last round, and maybe that's a testament to how proficient I've become uh, in, in this work uh, uh, myself. Um, not to say that I'm better than anybody else. Everybody has the ability to do this. But this round at least, it's been such a quick turnaround. Once I really, I guess you could say once I really got my ego out of the way and I really allowed myself to sit down with what's going on and feel what's going on and, and, and not be so hard on myself and work on forgiving consciously, just allowing that to happen, things have changed so quickly for me uh, energetically. So Take that with a grain of salt. I mean, I know I've had some serious, I, I've had some um, situations in which it really did not, <laughs> it was not that easy. It did not go that quickly. Um, there's some, there's a quote that I saw yesterday. I can't remember where I saw it, but it was so perfect and profound that it really stuck with me. But it said, the deeper the pain or the deeper the wound, the more your times you're gonna have to let it go, which to me translated into, depending on how deep some sort of wound or trauma or, or pain you have, depending on how deep that cut is, you're going to have to go through multiple cycles of having to let it go. And that made so much sense. Like, I kind of wish I had seen that before a long time ago because I didn't quite understand why it took me so long to let something go, why something, like I would work on something and I would work on letting it go and it would look, it would feel like it was okay, I was good, I was done, and then all of a sudden it would come right back. And I didn't quite understand why that would happen and that would be part of the ways or part of the reasons why I would get mad at myself, I would beat myself up, I would be really hard on myself for it. But it, it, but it makes perfect sense. If you're dealing with extreme trauma, it's going to take multiple rounds of facing it, feeling it, and working on healing it. You got to think about it this way. If it's a really deep, like say there's a really deep cut on your hand or a really deep cut on your arm or something, like in some cases, you're going to have to get stitches for that, right? But it's not going to heal right away. It's going to heal from the inside out. And so it's going to take multiple rounds of you doing that healing, that cleansing, and that clearing, clearing work, working on forgiveness and all that stuff for an extended amount of time until the wound is healed, okay? There is no time limit on this. There is no, like, you don't have to do it in any certain way. You don't have to do it by any certain moment in your life. Time is an illusion, you guys, and, and, and what's really helping me to get through all of this, to heal through all of this, is understanding that there is no expiration date and there is no deadline. The only necessity is to just focus on doing what needs to be done for however long it takes in order to get the healing done. That's all. That's all that matters here is just doing the healing because in the healing comes the expansion, okay? So, with all that said, I'm feeling pretty good. Not gonna lie, I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, one last little tidbit before we get into the reading, but um, I think I'm going to change my schedule and I think I'm going to probably start doing happy hour on Tuesdays. Wednesday was the day for it before because it was our hump day situation, right? But now that I'm here in Puerto Rico and I have this really awesome group of friends, um, and I know there was a, there was, I was in a period, right, uh, for a while where I was talking about how, you know, like, oh, well, I was, I was being all poopy about it, but, but my perspective has changed a lot lately. But anyway, so Wednesdays now are uh, Wing Wednesdays. And we all kind of get together and we all hang out and it's a really fun thing. So and I really want to be able to do that because I love it. 
Um, and then after that, you know, Wednesday into Thursday, and then we're getting into the front, into the weekend, right? So, and if not really much happens here on like Wednesday, Mondays and Mondays and Tuesdays. So I'm thinking Tuesday is going to be our happy hour day moving forward. Um, don't exactly quote me on that. It's still going to be dependent on what's going on in my week, but that's what I'm feeling like I'm doing moving forward. Of course, we're going to do happy hour today, but and it's Thursday, but just, just, just put that on your radar, yeah? All right, y'all, so let's get into this here. We're still using the True Heart Intuitive Tarot today. I really feel like let's just finish out the week with that, and then our Oracle, not our Oracle, our um, clarifying deck, oh, right here, is the Los Carabeo. Yes. All right, y'all. So let's get into this here and see what we've got for today. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situation shifts, circumstances, relationships, and places in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, kids, let's get into this here. I'm going to give this five shuffles, and we'll see what we would like to discuss today. Yeah? One. Two. Three. want to talk about today and what do we want to talk about today Steve? okay I'm hearing whoa leave that there oh shit okay so I'm hearing healing vibes today and I feel like the healing is actually really, really happening right now. You do have the Knight of, Cart <laughs> Knight of Cups at the bottom of the deck to start you out. And so what I feel like here is this is an energy of starting to get into a sense of vulnerability. I definitely feel like this is an energy of starting to work on allowing yourself to be open, really doing a lot of heart chakra clearing. I know that's really been, other than my root chakra, my heart chakra has been the focus for me. Uh, but the Knight of Cups here, I'm getting the sense of, you're getting the feeling that you're really starting to be open again. Or at least, if you're not getting to the place of being open again, I feel like you're getting to a place where you're, it's like you're considering it. You're, it, it you, you kind of see that possibility of being open or allowing your heart to be open or allowing your heart to heal, maybe even forgiving. Um, you're looking at it and you're kind of like, I mean like, okay, I... I don't know how I feel about that exactly, but I also know that I don't feel as bad about it at this point, right? Okay. Now, here's the thing that I also want to say, because there are some of you that have been talking about in like the whole like uh, resentment energy and working on forgiving and all that and, and going through the pain. Um, and someone specifically, I, uh, I, someone specifically left a, a comment yesterday talking about how they don't like to see or to just look, uh, 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 pay attention to anyone that causes you to feel pain and i get that um what i've come to understand in terms of all of this is we're not going to be able to get through it we're not going to be able to heal from it until we feel it and that was something that i dealt with while i was still with my ex-husband um i always i would always 
cut myself off from feeling any of the pain that I was that I had within me because I didn't want to, because at that point I was just starting to understand the theory of like the law of attraction and how our minds create our realities and everything. And I didn't want to focus on the pain. I didn't want to focus on the heartbreak. I didn't want to feel any of it because I didn't, I didn't want to perpetuate it. At that point, I felt like, well, if I gave it any attention, then it was just going to keep, you know, keep that cycle going. I need to just push it away and not face it, not deal with it, not look at it, not feel through it. But that, in essence, was only helping to keep my energy blocked. And I remember at that time in my life, I was dealing with a hell of a lot of back pain, like right at the right in the center of my back, right where my heart chakra is, right where you know your your um, your shoulder blades are, um, right in there. Like it felt like I had this knot in there that just needed to just pop, you know what I mean? But that was because my energy was getting blocked. I was not allowing the energy to flow through my body. I was not allowing myself to feel or to experience what was really going on within me because I didn't understand at that time that in order for me to heal from it, in order for me to release that pain, I had to let it flow. I had to feel through it. And I had to figure, and it's, and it's really not about just flowing through it and feeling it for like shits and giggles, right? It's about feeling it so that you can understand what it is so that in essence, sometimes you do have to relive it. You have to allow the memories to resurface and you have to relive it at some point or to some level in order for yourself to process it. And I understand, I mean, I was talking to someone last night, she shared her, st her story with me and like some of the things that people that we've gone through in life here are, I mean, tragic is an understatement and I'm so grateful to this person for sharing their story with me because number one, it showed a sense of vulnerability within her to allow herself to talk about it, to allow herself, even if it's in a very private situation, to allow herself to allow her experience to help others. And for me, you know, I, for me, it only hearing her story only helped to, to drive me right because it's for the people. It's for the people like her and the people like us, the people like me, or just like people in general that have gone through shit and don't know how to heal from it, don't know how to deal with it. That's why I do what I do. Okay, but I say all that to say, um, she needs to process it. She needs to feel it. She needs to heal it. And and her story is mind-blowingly heartbreaking, right? But in order for her to deal with it, in order to, for her to heal from it, there needs to be a sense of opening up her heart and feeling through it, becoming vulnerable in order to process it. And in doing that, that's what brings your justice into play. You have the Knight of Cups with justice at the bottom of the deck. Look at that. Your justice comes from you allowing yourself to be open, you allowing yourself to heal, you allowing yourself to, to, to be vulnerable, you allowing yourself to get back to that sense of your true nature. And yesterday, um, I over on Patreon, I was able to get the follow-up uh, vlog that I recorded posted. This was a follow-up to um, the, the reading that I did earlier in the week that was titled Resentment, right? And, um, oh shoot, I lost it. What was I talking about? Knight of Cups, being open, allowing yourself to heal, allowing yourself to feel. Damn it, you guys, I completely lost my train of thought. Okay, but anyway, um, I guess what I was trying to say, I was trying to... <laughs> Oh no, I was trying to rope everything, r link everything back to feeling, to bringing justice into your life. Um, but in that, but in that reading, in that extra session, that vlog session, I talked about how, you know, I opened up about what it is I was truly feeling and I allowed myself to be, be vulnerable and that helped me to clear a lot of the energetic karma or a lot of the energetic baggage that I was holding that allowed me to bring justice into my life because in a certain, in some way, uh, imbalance into my life because I was no longer holding on to it. I was no longer holding on to the resentment, holding on to the fear, and I was allowing myself to just express. 
and I recommend that you guys do that. I'm so sorry. I completely lost where I was going with that. It was such a good point, but like, whatever. I, I, let's get into the rest of the cards here that have come out. It's there, there's a number of them, quite frankly, and it's really, oh wow, it's really quite beautiful. All right, where do we start? There's a lot of cards that have come out here. Um, okay. So it looks like a choice has been made. Or a choice is being made here. Let's, let's start on this side. You have the Two of Wands in reverse, the Five of Pentacles in reverse, the Four of Pentacles in reverse. So let's start here. Um, the choice has been made, and that to me is why the two, the two of Wands is in reverse here, okay? You have that with the Four and the Five of Pentacles in reverse. No longer holding on to the resentment, no longer holding on to things for, for sake of, of fear or whatever. Um, and Five of, that's the Four of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles, is, I'm sorry, this is the Four of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles is about no longer leaving yourself out in the cold. Straight up and down. By holding on to the fear or holding on to the pain and not doing something about it, not expressing it, not feeling through it so that you can heal through it, you're effectively leaving yourself out in the cold, Five of Pentacles, because you're not allowing yourself to process and to heal. Okay, and so because of that, th I feel like this choice has been made and it's, 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 a, it's a conscious decision. You have the magician with the two of pentacles. This is a conscious decision to manifest a situation or to be in the manifestation mode in order to bring a greater balance into your life. And that greater balance ultimately brings greater justice into your life. And allows you to be open hearted, allows you to feel, allows you to be happy and get back to that sense of your inner child and that sense of innocence within you, the innocence of your heart, right? You have the Ten of Pentacles here with the High Priestess. There is a lesson, a very deep lesson that is being learned, a very high level lesson I'm also hearing. Like this is some advanced shit, guys. It may not seem like it. In some cases, for some of you, you may be looking at this situation or you may be looking at your life and thinking to yourself, man, this is fucking tri trivial. This is child's play. Hell no, this ain't no damn child's play. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, you need to give yourself some more credit than that, bitch. Because, like, this is some top level, high soul level shit, man. Ten of Pentacles to the High Priestess. This ain't a game. This is some real ass shit. And you should absolutely be proud of yourself. Six of fucking wands. Like, are you? Yo. Y'all about to get, yo. You need to be proud of yourself. Please. Even if you're still struggling with this, even if you still feel like you're like, you're losing everything, your life is over, your life is ending, you don't know how you're gonna come out of this on top, you will. This is not easy. And you absolutely should be proud of yourself, okay? The Empress, finally, with the Empress with the Ace of Cups. Loving yourself unconditionally, nurturing yourself, finding that sense of inner peace, inner balance. I'm also feeling very strongly getting a, uh, regaining your connection to Mother Earth or just a motherly energy, a nurturing energy, the, ener the nurturing energies of the universe here, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, <laughs> synchronicity, two, three, four, five. Um, I want to, it's time to go to clarification. I, I feel like I should be saying more, but we're already 20 four minutes into this video, into this reading, and I've said a lot, and I've basically given you what the cards are saying. So let's get into some clarification here. Um, not sure what I want to clarify, though. Okay, five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four, and 
five. Let's start with the magician. Let's talk about this for a second. And this magician energy is also, we're going to, you know, we're going to actually, let's clarify this whole section. So you have the two of wands in reverse, the five of pentacles in reverse, the four of pentacles in reverse, the two of pentacles upright with the magician. So let's clarify this for a second here, yeah? What is this energy? Well, look at what's at the bottom of the deck so far. Judgment. And quite frankly, this feels like a very serious energy of you kind of getting down, getting down, coming down to earth and be like, all right, bitch, we got to do something about this. Let's fuck, let's go, let's go, let's, we're going to, we're going to, we about to pull up over here. Mm-hmm. Because it's for your own good. Mm-hmm. So let's do it, honey. Come on. Put your big boy pants, big girl pants on. Rap. <laughs> I hate saying all this shit, but like it's coming through, so I'm gonna say it. So like, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, honey. Let's get this. Let's get this work. Okay. So let's clarify this. That in two of pentacles and the magician. Excellent. At the bottom of the deck, you do have the Seven of Cups here. Okay. But you also have this with the Six of Cups in reverse. You do have the Five of Swords, but the Five of Swords came out crossed. And then you have the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Swords. So here's the thing. The Six of Cups in reverse with the uh, came out and then the, um, the King of Pentacles came out. So what this is saying to me is this is literally, in terms of the magician here and the two of pentacles, doing the conscious work to bring balance and healing into your life, is what I just heard. In terms of the past, it seems that you're good. And if you're not good now, this is where you're heading, okay? The past is no longer, the past no longer has any weight on you. The past no longer has any pull on you. You are becoming solid in yourself, King of Pentacles, solid in your identity, solid in your body, solid with, and, and actually it feels like you're becoming more comfortable with your soul and the lessons that your soul is needing to thought, feel or, or experience and grow through in this lifetime, in this life cycle, it feels like you're becoming much more solid within yourself in terms of whatever it is in the past that you're needing to heal from and deal with. Next thing that came out was the Five of Swords. However, the Five of Swords came out crossed. And then finally, what came out with that is the Queen of Swords. So this is an energy of looking at this Five of Swords energy, which represents self-sabotage and beating yourself down. This is looking at that energy and saying, no the fuck you won't. No more, bitch. We ain't doing this no more. It's time to heal. It's time to grow. And thus, you have the energy of no longer being at a crossroads, two of wands, because you've, had a, you've made a decision to let go of certain circumstances, four of pentacles in reverse, and no longer leave yourself out in the cold and reject yourself, five of pentacles in reverse. Beautiful. So finally then, let's, to make it even, or just because I'm curious, I guess, let's talk about this. You have the High Priestess with the Ten of Pentacles, the Six of Wands, the Ace of Cups, and the Empress. And now the Ace of Cups and the Empress is also kind of feeling like an energy of uh, reparenting yourself or getting back to an energy of unconditional love for the self, right? Okay, excellent. Reparenting yourself and loving yourself for who you are. And I'm feeling also very strongly of just like doing whatever it is the fuck that you want that's gonna make you happy. I am, I've got such a potty mouth today. But you know what, damn it, I'm proud of us. Because if we're really going through this, like this is really a serious accomplishment. I don't care what nobody has to say to you about it. I don't care what nobody else's opinion is about it. You absolutely have a right to hold your head up high and to feel confident in yourself and to feel proud of yourself for going through this and coming out on the other end on top. you damn right you're coming out on top. You best believe you're coming out on top. Ain't no other way about it than coming out on top. So you better just get with the program, honey. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's look at this here. Let's get a little clarification on this one. Okay. 
Yep, look at that. Oh, and then we circle right back around to none other than judgment. Whoa, wait, well, the sun, there we go, judgment. Yeah, y'all, this is waking up. This is rising above. This literally feels like pulling yourself out of the depths and not allowing yourself to be in pain any longer. There is an element to this for some of us. There is an element to this in which, and maybe this is actually for all of us. Maybe this is what we're learning in terms of, you know, uh, spiritual ascension and soul growth. But there are beings out there that want us to stay in pain, that want us to stay in this low vibration, that want us to keep putting ourselves out in the cold and rejecting ourselves and, and beating ourselves up and self-sabotaging and all that. They want that because they feed off that energy. The more they can keep us down, the more power they, the more control they can have. But this is very much an energy of not allowing that to happen any longer. Literally pulling yourself out of it because it feels like, and this is kind of what it felt like for me, but feeling like there really is no other choice. It really got to the point where I was just like, I don't want to feel like this any longer. I'm not going to let you win any longer. I am going to take my power back. I am going to take my identity back. I am going to reclaim my God-given gifts and right to live as the being that I am and to be happy as the being that I am. Nothing more and nothing less. Which is representative of this relationship, this bond that you have with yourself. Two of Cups, Ace of Swords, Death transformation with the five of cups okay that's fine but to see the five of cups is what we're talking about here this sorrow this feeling like something is lost this feeling of pain and 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 like the world is ending but that's the thing all is not lost because ultimately, yeah, you may have this heartbreaking situation, you may have a lot of sorrow to deal with, but you still have those two cups standing behind you. And those two cups is your, uh, is your the, those two cups are your, bo your bond with yourself. You will always have yourself. You will always have source. You will always have God. You will always have spirit. You will always have your ancestors. You will always have your spirit guides. You are never alone. You always have your... Re if you have no other relationship in this world, you still have your relationship with yourself. And there is never a reason why you should leave yourself out in the cold ever again. Ace of Swords to death. Transformation. No matter, regardless of what has been done to you, regardless of what have, uh, regardless of what you have done, God doesn't care, Source doesn't care, the universe doesn't care. All they care about is: Did you learn from it? Did you grow from it? Did you learn the lesson? Ten of Pentacles and the High Priestess. Yes. Excellent. Let's move forward. Knight of Cups, justice. Or, on the other hand, no, you didn't learn it yet? Okay, that's fine. Let's try again. Doesn't ever mean we don't love you. Doesn't ever mean we don't love you. But the point here, the goal here, is to learn the lesson. That's all. You are still unconditionally loved no matter what. And that goes for all beings. No matter what your view of them is, no matter what your opinion is of them. We could be talking about the most heinous individuals on the face of the earth. God, source, creator still loves them. Always have and always will. Just the same that they love you. That tends to be a, a hard topic to grasp in this three-dimensional reality, in this, in this shit show we call life on earth, right? <laughs> but still facts. Alrighty, y'all. Closing 
metaphorical guidance is coming from beyond Lemuria today. Five, four shuffles. One, whoops, one, Okay, no, see now they're five shuffles is sufficient. All right, fine, so we'll do five shuffles. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. And five. Try that again. Five. All right. Here we go. Closing Oracle guidance. Oh man. I love this card. I love this card. And actually, I was talking about this card a few days ago. I don't remember what reading it was in. Um, I think it actually was last week. Uh, but it's card number 12. Water the overflow. And I love this card because it talks about uh, um, allowing the flow of love and of energy and whatnot to just flow, not holding on to it. You see how she has, uh, is it gonna, it's not gonna, I don't think it's gonna focus correctly, but water is flowing down from the divine down to her and it's flowing through her hands, but she's not cupping it, trying to hold on to it. She allows it to flow through her hands and continue to go. And that's because, I mean, we're going to read the card, but that's because this flow is constant. This flow doesn't ever stop. So you don't ever have to worry about not having enough or not getting what you need. It's very similar to this energy of the Ace of Cups, okay? But let's read this card because I'm not doing it justice. I'm actually kind of butchering it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Water, the overflow, abundance, non-attachment, the paradigm of no scarcity, allowing financial and energetic gifts to flow through and create more. During one of my most pivotal Lemurian visions, I was guided into a life where I lived in a humble mud hut as I could create any thought in the multiple dimensions that I had access to I simultaneously resided in a beautiful crystalline, crystalline palace. I found myself in a paradigm where I could create anything at will, and thus there was no concept of scarcity, nor the need to hold on to anything. This experience initiated a, a shift that changed my life. We may only be starting to touch on this notion in our mundane reality. When we give more from a place of overflow than obligation, even when we think we have nothing, have it come from, having it come from this mindset can only create a more abundant flow of what we want. The being in this picture has many hands, and yet still the water is allowed to fall through her fingers. It blesses her in the moments it touches her radiant skin and then continues on its journey. Her heart is so overflowing with love. I'm sorry, her heart is also overflowing with love. Her eyes are filled with tears. She allows what comes through to move her without control. She gracefully allows whatever she is feeling to be expressed. And as she does so, she radiates so much light into the world. That's the thing. You have to allow yourself to feel what it is needs to be felt and to be and to express it. Don't hold it in any longer, but they, because that is only going to continue to keep blockages in your energy system. Yes. Themes of this card are allowing for flow, receptivity, the path of least resistance, purity, clearing away that which no longer serves, emotion. Clearing away that which no longer serves. And it feels like at this point, 
we're ready for it. Actually, I just heard you've been ready all along. You just didn't see it that way. That's okay. Now that you have the perspective, now we can do something about it. We gonna get this work, y'all. <laughs> All right, there you have it, kids. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. The floor is officially open for happy hour, so if you'd like to get in on it, check the description box below. Only 10 readings per session, so you might want to get in on it as soon as possible, yeah? With that said, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning, yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>